only movement that does it in a different way is Gulen. They really go inside the system. They try to realize their objectives through the regular uh, educational system in Belgium. And not, they avoid even uh, religious facilities. Second point. Third point, uh, the paradigm used to transfer uh, education is, and, and there the, I quote the director of PRISMA, which is an educational Gulen inspired initiative in Brussels. They say, well, the image of a Turkish community as a closed community that lives in diasporas must change. Belgian Turks must know at first Belgium very well, not Turkey. If you look at the classrooms, you enter in the classrooms, you will not see a picture of Atatürk in the Gulen schools. You will not see a picture of Atatürk, you will not see Turkish anthem, you will not see these kind of things. If you go to the Dianet initiatives, that is what you will see. Hmm? Okay. Uh, also, there, there is something similar between Miligurush and uh, Gulen initiatives, and I think it is related to their uh, civil society uh, origin, that they work very much to, with parents, a relation between parents, teachers, and some sponsoring. This is absent then in the Dianet perspective. Now, if as a policy maker, what I was years ago, look to these things, I say, well, for me, the, sorry, but the most interesting approach for someone who starts from the idea that uh, we are going, evolving to a multicultural society somewhere, if you like it or you don't like it, but we are going more or less in this direction, I think the Gulen approach is the most um, structural, the approach to the, these initiatives is the most structural and I think the most promising one for the future. That's also the reason why I had contact with people in the Gulen movement to start a chair at our university. And now, another thing is how are the developments? When we look at what I should say, and I know I, here I'm saying something that doesn't really correspond to uh, Gulen philosophy and so all things, but it's a reality. I see a movement that is supported most of the time by second generation highly skilled people. That's what I see in the different initiatives. And if there is some first generation present, it is more at the level of the sponsoring, the people who finance it. But the real people who, who, who are in the window of this uh, movements of these approaches are second generation people. More there, and, may, and I think also in the future, third and so on, generation people, and highly skilled most of the time. And there's a difference with the Dianet again and with uh, Miligurish, where you have much more continuously a first generation uh, approach. Okay, now, what is the representativity? Well, I should say, in the first generation, it is clear as the Gulen movement is working less with mosques, that the impact of Miligurus and uh, Dianet is higher in a first generation. But at the second generation level, if I really, and there it is counting grassroots level, if I see what is the impact, I should say, well, they are more or less similar nowadays, in uh, equal nowadays in Belgium. If I count, how many students, how many, you know, are following discourses, are following their discourses. I should say we are really equal between the Miligurish approach, the Anet approach, and the Gulen approach. But the Gulen approach is increasing. The impact, numerical impact is increasing. And there is something else. It is much more structural. It is anchored in society. Now, normally you should expect some competition then between the different associations or approaches, but I have to say, or I, I'm blind, it's also possible, that today I don't see really that competition in Belgium, and uh, an explanation may be that 
Guillain movement has no mosques also. That's maybe one of the explanations. So people who adhere to Guillain movement go to the Dianet mosque, so there is some mix. And I meet people with responsibilities really in the Guillain uh, initiatives who have family members who adhere to Miligurus. And it doesn't seem to create a problem. First part, does this about the social? Second thing, how many minutes? Eight. Eight, okay. The movement. What does movement mean? Again, I start grassroots level. When I look in Belgium what exists, I see a federation, Fidaxio, but it was started only in 2010. It has some 50 associations, but it started only in 2010, meaning that the different associations started before the federation. And it's only at the second moment that some of them create a federation together with five platforms. Business people, business and professionals, eh? then education and youth, then women, then social cohesion, dialogue, these things. You have five platforms with two strong platforms, business people and education and youth. But I say the federational aspect comes at the later moment, it's not at the beginning. Um, and important, some of the very important initiatives are not part of the federation. If I look, if, if you ask in Belgium what is Guillain inspired movement, they will say very often Lucerna School. But Lucerna School is not part of the federation. Okay? And IDP, Intercultural Dialogue Platform, is not part of the Federation. And Zaman newspaper is not part of the Federation. Because what I see is, or what we see is, what you may call a loosely, loosely knit social network. The people know one another, but not even so much, you know. When I ask it at Lucerna School, there is in the French part of Belgium, Ecole des Etoiles. And I asked them, can you put me in contact with them? They well, we should like to do it, but we don't know them. Okay? That's, that's what I call loosely knit social network. And when I look then inside the local knit, uh, the, uh, so, uh, loosely knit social network, I see what you may call loosely coupled institutes. What do I mean with that? A Lucerna school. I'm a member of the advice community. I see a bit of Lucerna School. Well, you have the board, and that's the financing people, and that is this what I call some highly skilled second generation intellectuals with master diplomas and so on. They are the board. You can say, well, that's quite good then. These people know, but even I should say more the intellectuals than the entrepreneurs. The entrepreneurs have also some other, you know, for entrepreneurs, yes, they finance, but they have also other interests than only religious. Their interest is also to have good contacts with Flemish Uniso, which is the, repre the representing body of all the entrepreneurs. Hmm? It's not so that you have so something very ideologically uh, mono you know, mono-streaming. That's not really what happens. And then you, you look to the teachers. Well, I see Moroccan teachers, Flemish teachers. I see Romanian teachers. And the Turkish teachers, or Muslim teachers, are a minority. Don't tell me that all these other people are reading Gulen. They are not reading Gulen. But what they have to do, they have to adhere to some aspects of the project. And then the parents, well, I claim that some parents are even, I don't want to generalize, are even shopping between different uh, approaches in migration. They put at elementary school, their, they say to their kids to follow uh, Turkish lessons, and then they go for secondary school to the Lucerna school, where Turkish is quasi forbidden to be spoken at school. Okay? So that's what I call a loosely knit social network with loosely coupled institutes in it. 
my God, we call that a movement. Yeah, yeah, it's movement. And I had still a discussion this morning because I have a problem with the word movement. And then someone said to me, that's my colleague, Professor Casey, said to me, well, maybe the best word to use is still an Arabic word, but it seems it exists also in Turkish, harakat. A harakat meaning there are some ideas, it's even an Aristotelian concept at the beginning, there are some ideas that put things in movement, that make that things start to move, and these things, once they move, they are really moving, and they move, or they put other things in movement. I think, you know, when we use movement in, in Western ears, movement is something organized. And we look at that, and we don't see that organization as such. And we say, that's double agenda. They are hiding something. Because we don't see the hierarchy, there will be someone there who organizes it. But honestly, honestly, I'm looking already two, three years to that. <laughs> I'm looking two, three years to that because you imagine at my university when we propose the chair, they Google and they say, Glenn, Glenn, what is behind that? And I say, listen, as an anthropologist, I'm re really running in the field to discover, and I don't see, I think there is something related a bit at Islamic tradition in it, but very modern. Now, what is, now I come to something, and, and there it may be different between Turkey and the diaspora. Why do I think that second generation intellectuals are so attracted by this concept? I think because it is Islam related at modernity. Islam related at modernity, and at modernity means also pluralism. And they want to adhere to these ideas. That's really what makes it so attractive to them. And why some of them say we want to take some responsibility for our community, and that's the way to go. That's with my interpretation of it. And to, to end with it, there's another thing I see. I visited also the schools. You know, Lucena School invited me to visit schools in, uh, in Turkey. I was a bit surprised because they are different. Just don't think that all things that are current inspired are equal. They are not. If I go to, to, to the schools in Istanbul, I see schools where they say multilingual education from the beginning, even in one school, Chinese, imagine. Or you may choose between Chinese and Russian as second or third language. In Belgium, if you go look in Flanders, they say, oh no, only Dutch. Only Dutch, because we want to integrate, you see, and even no Turkish. So there is not something, there is not such a thing as, I, I think, a movement as a very well structured organization. I really do think, and I think that we have to go back to old Aristoteles and to a certain Islamic tradition to understand what the concept of movement really means. Thank you.